G'day and welcome to the video that is sure to offend a whole bunch of you Audi fans out there. Now look, before we get into this, this list is your fault, okay? See, in last week's top five underrated Audis video, the link for which is just up here, we asked you guys what you thought were the most overrated Audi models. Plus, we reached out to a whole bunch of different Audi groups, Audi fans, we trawled through reports and articles online. So this video, it's basically just the culmination of all of that information. And look, I'll be honest here, I don't like this list because there are two cars on it that I personally love that I was just simply outvoted. And also, look, overrated can mean different things to different people, but for this video, we're sticking with basically the Audis that were just underwhelming at what they're supposed to do best, or the ones that just have a horrible reputation for reliability. Anyway, look, kicking things off, it's the A3, but a specific one. Unfortunately, a range of different A3 models were suggested for this video, all featuring a wonderful variety of different issues, but the standout was the second generation 2004 to 2013, and specifically those fitted with the 1.6 FSI engine. Not only does this engine commonly suffer from a host of different issues, which we'll cover in a second, but when bolted into the front of an A3, a model of car that at least should offer some resemblance of driver enjoyment to match the brand's premium image, you're left with performance time that are similar to that of a Toyota Hilux. Plus, this engine, it's not some Audi exclusive premium driveline like the marketing department may lead you to believe. This thing has been lethargically powering a range of different Skoda and Volkswagen models slowly down the road, unless they broke down on the way there. Which brings us to the real issues. When talking to a few different Audi mechanics and specialists, they regarded this engine as not only one of the worst Volkswagen Group engines of all time, but possibly one of the worst engines overall of all time. Oil consumption issues, faulty and expensive sensors, carbon deposits in the intake system and the valves, and major timing chain issues, often resulting in catastrophic engine failures, are all known faults. And when the repair bills often delve deep into the four-figure realm, considering the A3 these engines are fitted to are often purchased by those not exactly swimming in cash, this Audi is immensely overrated. Okay, next up, this one, it's not so much about any reliability or mechanical issues, but just the fact that they're just a bit underwhelming. It's the RS Q3. Okay, look, we're really sorry, Audi, but we're talking about the current RS Q3 here, and specifically in sport back form. And before all of you Audi fanboys start getting your pants in a twist, look, yes, there is no denying that this thing is an absolute weapon for what it is in terms of performance figures. Thanks to its turbocharged 2.5-litre five-cylinder engine, this little SUV will throw it from a standstill to 100 kilometres an hour in just four and a half seconds. That is bloody quick for a performance car, let alone a small SUV. Plus, thanks to its all-wheel drive system, performance-tuned suspension, and sticky rubber, it will just decimate the corners as well. But the problem is, it just... It doesn't feel special when it's doing it. See, according to various reviews, RSQ3 owners, and possibly even a few Audi employees, for a car SUV thing that has positioned and engineered performance as its selling point, look, firstly, the gearbox lets it down, reportedly being slow to respond when stamping on the loud pedal. The firm suspension causes it to feel a bit nervous over less than perfect surfaces. Plus, it thuds through potholes, and despite all the clever electronics, it does tend to understeer when getting enthusiastic, so you end up with the worst of both worlds when it comes to ride and handling. Plus, the steering apparently feels pretty numb, which all results in a performance SUV that simply isn't that much fun to drive. Plus, in sport back form, you reduce the levels of practicality, meaning that you end up with a performance-focused SUV that isn't fabulous at the practical aspects of being an SUV and is underwhelming to steer unless you're going in a straight line. Look, we're not saying that the RS Q3 is a bad car at all. It's not. But the fact that it wears an RS badge, it just should simply be better. Okay, next up, it's the A4. Now, just like the A3, plenty of different generations and models were unfortunately suggested, including, as heartbreaking as this is, even some S4 models. But the A4 that gets the nod of disapproval is the 2004 to 2007 B7 generation, and specifically any front-wheel drive models featuring the Multitronic Continuously Variable Transmission, or CVT. See, according to some reports, this generation of A4 ranked dead last in terms of reliability, regardless of the fact that it has been available with a wide range of different petrol and diesel engines. Issues like ignition coil pack and spark plug failures, feeble engine bay plastics, carbon buildup in the intake valves, excessive oil consumption, PCV valve failures, fuel pump failures, defective fuel injectors, premature cam lobe wear, 
Look, honestly, the list just goes on and on. Now, look, obviously there are thousands of owners of B7A4s out there that maintain their cars religiously and have never and probably will never have an issue, but even a quick look online will show countless reports and complaints regarding this generation of A4, often resulting in huge repair bills and even larger headaches. Again, ignoring the reliability concerns, it is a bloody lovely car. But when you do take those reliability issues into account, it just should be so much better than what it is. It's just, it's overrated. Okay, look, next up, this next one pisses me off because personally, I love this car and the fact that I now have to tear it to shreds feels fundamentally wrong. I know you guys voted for it, but you're wrong. It's the RS6, but you're wrong. All right, we're talking about the previous and current generation RS6 here, basically from 2014 to, well, it's still a current model. And before I rattle off all of the negatives, Guys, come on, how can you not love this car? Twin turbo V8, all wheel drive, sexy as hell wagon body, and just look at it. Firstly, many owners and reviewers are claiming that it's just not that exciting to drive. Look fast, absolutely, but the steering lacks any real feedback, feeling overly light. On a standard exhaust, it can sound muted and flat, and with the weight distribution being biased to the front and the Quattro all-wheel drive system being so incredibly efficient, any semblance of fun is basically removed from the driving experience. Then there are the owner's lists of issues like infotainment and touchscreen annoyances. They suffer from the same long list of issues and complaints as the rest of the A6 range, and the fact that the things that the RS6 excels at, they're not exactly exclusive to the RS6 in the first place. Obviously, look, this will vary from car to car and where you're located, but you can pick up a 2014 or 2015 RS6 here in Australia from around about $85,000. But that's a car that was over $230,000 when brand new here. That's a $145,000 loss in depreciation or just over $24,000 a year. But still, you guys are all wrong. I don't think it's overrated. And look, we're all entitled to our own opinion, but if it's not what I think, you're wrong. Actually, if anyone out there has an RS6 of these two generations and you live in Sydney or Newcastle or somewhere close and you'd be happy to see it featured on Redriven, can you let us know in the comments or message us on Instagram because we would love to feature one. I'd love to own one as well, so you probably won't get the keys back. Oh, also, if you haven't already and if you're enjoying our content, can you please hit those like, subscribe and bell buttons and share our content with all of your mates because just doing those simple things, it helps us exist in the first place. Okay, taking this list out, and it's again, it's another car that I personally love, but I was bloody outvoted. It's the first generation Audi TT, you bastards. Firstly, there are the class action lawsuits relating to timing belt and engine failures and electronic defects. Then there are the fatalities related to high-speed accidents thanks to the TT's issues with handling and stability. And these days, many first-generation TT's are plagued with serious problems. Electrical issues, persistent and common oil leaks, transmission problems, failing water pumps, more feeble engine bay plastics. The list, unfortunately, just goes on and on. All of which, if you're not fixing them yourself, can become incredibly expensive to repair. Plus, when compared to similar cars both at the time and more recently, and thanks to the TT being based on the same platform that underpins the Mark IV Volkswagen Golf, and especially when packing the Haldex 4-wheel drive system, the TT was never the most inspiring of sports cars to drive, tending to favour understeer the moment driving became a little bit more serious and a little bit more fun. To many out there, the Mark I TT is simply form over function to the worst degree. A car that, under its overly styled skin, is nothing more than a modified Volkswagen Golf riddled with ongoing and expensive issues that, even when it's at its best, fails to deliver what it should, and that's being a true sports car. Still, I, I bloody love them, but I do have a history of loving kind of shit cars. Link for which is just type. Oh, wow, my brain just stopped. And specifically, specifically, issues like ignition coil pack and spark pug, spark pug, spark pug dog failures. Plus, when compared to similar cars, similar cars, that's not even a word. Aren't exactly exclusive to the RS6 in the first nish, 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 nish. Oh my God, come on, here we go. Anyway, guys, what did you think of the list? What makes up your personal top five overrated Audis list? Let us know in the comments below. See you next week.